Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome back to another Wealth Journey episode. Today, we're going to do a nice financial breakdown of last month. So we're going to see my spending, savings, and investing. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. So check it out right here. So for my total spending, I spent $7,493.93 out of the budgeted $7,000. Now, even though I did go a little bit over budget, like $500 almost over budget, I do want to mention that I did actually make an extra $3,000, almost $4,000 last month. So going over budget by $400 when making that much more money in the month, that's completely acceptable. And we're gonna break down just how I did this. So naturally when I make more money, I give more money. So my highest spending category on this particular month, the month of November, happened to come out to $2,265 flat. I have absolutely no shame in that number and that is what I love to do. I love to give. So I do my hard work, I save money, I invest money. But at the end of the day, what does it all mean if you don't have any to give? think on that for the rest of this video. Anyway, rent came out to $1,804.20. So that's pretty standard. It's gonna pretty much range for me anywhere between $1,800 to $1,810 a month. That's because at my apartment complex, certain things are factored within the rent, such as LA trash pickup and things like that. DoorDash, AKA my biggest vice, came out to $497.81. Now I did mention I made a lot more money last month than I typically do on a month because I got a bonus at work, but 81 of these dollars is supposed to be groceries. It just keeps categorizing it as DoorDash for some reason. And no matter what I do, it is not changing. So pretend that says like $417, that's more accurate. Restaurants came out to $477.69. Um, few things with that. I always like to go into detail as to why I spend a certain amount in a category just to give you context and also to give you insight on what it looks like to actively work on improving your finance. But anyway, it's actually lower than normal and I would like to keep it anywhere between $200 to $400 a month once I really dial everything in. However, I like to eat and my girlfriend enjoys a good time when I take her out and everything. So. I'm always in that limbo phase of balancing the idea behind being as responsible financially as possible, but also enjoying myself and doing the things that I like and enjoying the fruits of my labor. It's been a thing this entire year to be perfectly honest with you. So I take opportunities like last month when I make extra money like that. And I'm like, you know what? This is the time to enjoy myself. But if I was in a more uncomfortable financial situation, wouldn't be no enjoyment, wouldn't be no fun or anything like that until my finances got to a certain place. That's actually how I used to live back in 2021. I was extremely frugal. But since then, my money has gone up quite a bit. In addition to the fact that my business revenue from not just YouTube, but my products and my new platform, Wealth Journey Collective, are all bringing in some more money. So I don't actually mind spending that much for restaurants when you factor in the amount that I made last month. Groceries came out to $408.40. I did travel back home to North Carolina, so I wasn't here for like an entire week. I live in Nevada now. So I wasn't here for an entire week and um, I didn't grocery shop for an entire week. So that definitely shaved off probably about anywhere between 50 to $100 off my groceries. But I did go out to eat a little bit when I was in North Carolina. So it kind of evens out. Insurance, and this is both life insurance and car insurance, bundled in one, as you can see right here on the screen. Now that's $341.15. Again, that's pretty standard. For my gym and Muay Thai, it came out to $337.98. And by, and by gym, I'm talking about my recreational gym, Anytime Fitness that I go to, to lift weights, run, jump, and all those fun things. But my Muay Thai gym is where I practice the martial art of Muay Thai. And I also include private lessons with that. I typically have a private lesson with my coach once a week, every week for the entire month. Those are typically $60 per session. And then the regular cost for the monthly classes is $120. Anytime fitness is like $19 every other week. So it's a weird number, but I like to just say $40 just to be safe a month. But yeah, that's what it came out to. So it was less than usual because I didn't do as many private sessions because I was traveling. And frankly, Muay Thai is so embedded in me now, I really don't like to miss classes or sessions or anything. So this one that says telephone. My phone bill and my internet bill are looped in one, as you can see right here. So my internet bill with AT&T was $105.95. My phone bill with Verizon was $176.03. 
pretty standard. Student loans, $211.06, and that's what I spend every month for my student loans. And it's just going to keep going up every year until I've graduated payments. So the payments are going to get larger and larger, basically until my student loans get paid off or until I get more aggressive about paying off my student loan, which I do not plan on doing anytime soon because I'm heavily investing, which we'll talk about here in a second. Business expenses is quite a long list, but just to give you a quick overview, Zoom communications, TubeBuddy, Epidemic Sound, Audible, I do consider that a business expense because I learn about a lot of business stuff using Audible, and I actually have been reading a book on cryptocurrencies called Crypto Assets, which can help me build my net worth and help me understand what I'm investing in more and become more of an informed investor when it comes to certain mysterious investments. Then, of course, we have Adobe, and then we have the thumbnails that I pay for every month, which comes out to $120. And it's not showing up here right now, but I also do pay for my shorts as well because they're about high quality. General merchandise, which is Amazon shopping, I usually just get supplements on Amazon. I pretty much do it every single month, and it's the same exact supplements, which mainly end up being vitamins. Occasionally, I might order a protein shake. Not too much. I don't really... I don't really deal with protein shakes as much lately. So for electronics, I have an Apple bill in which I pay for the data because I need more data because I'm running out of data all the time. But also, I purchased some cryptocurrency and for some reason it put it in the electronics category. No idea why. But that came out to $99.04. Online services, this is just one. And this is my Calendly service. And that's the service I use to schedule all my meetings. So all my one-on-ones, all my Zoom calls, all my coaching sessions, all that good stuff. Is scheduled through Calendly and it's a really good product so that's how much I spend per year on it this is just a yearly expense so this doesn't typically come out every for some reason in my healthcare and medical uh, stuff like vidIQ and other subscriptions that I use for my business like it got into healthcare for some reason so I got to fix that but also I do want to let you know I was going through my finances pretty in-depth literally early today and um, I'm like, I'm spending money on a few subscriptions that I don't even use. So TubeBuddy, VidIQ, Patreon, those three in particular, I just canceled all of those. I'm not using them. Like if I was actively using them and they were adding true value to what I'm doing, I would keep it up. But right now I don't really see it. That frees up about $40 of cash. Not a ton, but that is $40 more that I can do more with. Gasoline and fuel. To my surprise, I only spent $74.14. Um, usually I would spend between $180 and $200, but again, I wasn't really here for like a week. Not only was I not here for like a week, but I was also not at work for like two weeks and I took a PTO. I needed some time to get my mind back right. And everybody needs to do that every once in a while. I usually do it once per year. This was my time to do it. So entertainment. So for me, it was Spotify, Netflix, and then me and my girlfriend went to the movie. So she wanted to see that movie Wicked, so we checked that out. The vocals were about on point. Utilities, $53.71. I'm usually banking on my utilities being anywhere between $50 and $70, and this one is in the perfect range, and even sometimes it's actually below that. Travel, yes, I was on the plane, but I already paid for that like two months ago. So this travel that it's referring to is when I took a ride to the airport and then a ride back from there. That was the two times I took Lyft, and it really was inexpensive. Usually when I use Lyft, it's less expensive than Uber. So just in case y'all are wondering what you use, use whichever one is cheaper for you in your area. For some reason, my Peacock subscription, which that's another subscription I got rid of because I never use it. I don't even watch TV like that. Like, why the heck am I paying even $1, you know what I'm saying, a month? It was $7.99 a month. I don't need it. I ain't watching it. I ain't using it. It's about out. But anyway, um, for some reason, that got registered under shoes and clothes. And then... The last one you see is Patreon. So that was how much money I spent on things like bills. But I'm a firm believer that making more money isn't enough. Like, once you make that more money, you have to appropriate it. And the way I did that, I was like, you know what? Instead of doing my normal $700 in my Roth IRA, I'm going to go ahead and do $1,400 in my Roth IRA. You know why? Because that was the magic number to get me to $7,000, which means I have maxed out my Roth IRA for the year of 2024. And that effectively means that for this month, where I would normally put $700 in my Roth IRA, I freed that money up. So now you know where it's going. And it's probably going to go in a mixture between the stock market and cryptocurrency. 
and this whole year I haven't really touched my Weeble account so I'm gonna actually show you a screenshot of it because it kind of fell back a little bit last month <clears throat> but look at it right now I wanted to show you it live real quick because still fluctuating it's Monday morning as I record this video but it has bounced back and it's looking good right now everything is up. not a single thing is down but I showed that to you because I want you to understand that I want to focus more of my time and energy in this month and in 2025 as an entire year. I want to spend that time putting in more money this specific account. My short term goal for this account is to get its value up to 50k. And from there, I'm a numbers driven person so from there I feel like I'm going to be super intentional once it hits because the whole premise behind this show is to build wealth and I want to show you all how I'm building wealth and if you ever want investing insights or how I'm making my investing decisions or how much I'm investing way before it even comes out on YouTube because honestly I put the money into these accounts literally a couple weeks ago but if you want that information join the Wealth Journey Collective I'll have the link down in the description it's a collective group where we all talk we all share our wins we all introduce ourselves to each other and we just help each other grow financially and we just share insights and information based off of our own experience and what and what hasn't worked but anyway that account that i just showed you there is intel now so i spent 200 dollars of my extra money on intel just because i know that they're working with amd and nvidia and it has a lot of government backing which i think will help prop up the stock price i do not plan on being in this particular stock forever but i do plan on holding it for at least five years and here's a quick screenshot of my Roth IRA so you can see exactly how that money has been growing over the course of time. And, and just in case you're curious and you want to see my cryptocurrency and how that's performing, I'm going mean, to show that to you. Here's a screenshot. Crypto moves incredibly fast, so the numbers literally keep moving like every millisecond. But uh, I have $164.44 in my Coinbase account and then in my actual Nano Ledger which I'm gonna transfer all of this to my, na my, to my Nano Ledger here later on. But on the Ledger, I have over $670 on my Nano. And my XRP investment that I made earlier this month, like literally a week ago, I got it at $1.44, like $1.44. It is now $2.69. That is nasty, okay? But I'm holding on to it and I'm actually still pretty conservative when it comes to crypto. So I really only invest in the top players. So Bitcoin, ethereum cardano xrp and then another one that i plan on adding here later on probably in a few months if not sooner is going to be something called solana i'm not a crypto channel i'm not even advocating for investing in crypto i just had the revelation literally in at the end of november that you know what not investing in the crypto is unwise because i went through my bitcoin I held, I held my Bitcoin since like 2021 and no, I don't have like a full Bitcoin. I have like a fraction of a fraction of Bitcoin, but just holding it without touching it, it has more than doubled and doubling your investment, even within a three year period is something serious. So I'm not investing right now to, to hit home runs and it's mostly because already done hit a home run with nvidia 111 shares at 19 dollars, and the price went up to 140 something yeah you best believe you know what i'm saying I, I know what it feels like to hit a home run i'm not chasing the fomo i'm not chasing the million dollar coin you know what i'm saying if i get it i get it but i'm investing to grow my money not to make money over the short term i'm not doing the whole speculative thing i've legitimately done research in the stocks and in the crypto that i've invested in so that is my speech on investing for today. But anyway, <clears throat> I have some very special surprises for all of you when it comes to the rest of this month and next year, the Wealth Journey series is gonna do crazy numbers because I'm gonna be sharing things that I've never shared before on this channel. And I'm really excited about it. And at the end of December, December 31st to be exact, I will be going live again to discuss my report from tracking my net worth for the entire year, what I've learned from it, how I'm gonna level up for the next year, and so on and so forth, you are in for a treat. If you wanna join Wealth Journey Collective, please check out the link down in the description. And if you like this video, you'll love this one. You can check it out right here.